Best Irish music on irishradio.org with Jerry Byrne. Kieran Kavanagh is a multi-award winning director and producer of the National Dance Company of Ireland's Rhythm of the Dance. This internationally acclaimed show returns to the UK this month and throughout July at just shy of 30 venues. Here's Irish Radio, we're pleased to be invited uh, along on a previous tour date to see Rhythm of the Dance and uh, give it a five-star review. It's a high-energy Irish dance and music extravaganza and is really spectacular. World and Irish champion dancers are sensational with incredible fast footwork, synchronisation and seamless transitions into visibly exciting formations. The power and energy of the male dancers and the grace of the female troupe are incredibly impressive. Now you can combine this with the exceptional traditional musicians and the harmonies of young Irish tenors and you have a non-missable show. Now the dates and venues can be found at rhythmofthedance.com or indeed they can be found at uh, the link on our website irishradio.org. Now to tell us more I'm delighted to welcome Kieran Kavanagh uh, once again to the show. Kieran, great to speak to you once again. Hello Jerry, and nice to talk to you too. Oh. I hope all all of you there are well on Irish radio. Thank you, Dick. Here now we'll we'll chat in a moment of a rhythm of the dance. But your career before uh, turning to the musical theatre is fascinating. You've worked with numerous household names: Willie Nelson, James Brown, Waylon Jennings, Chuck Berry, Tammy Wynette, Van Morrison, Chris Christophers, and Don Williams, Jerry Lee Lewis, and significantly, while uh, still only in your twenties, you brought Johnny Cash to uh, Ireland and uh, several times more while he was still in good health. That's correct. I, I actually, uh, Johnny Cash, I suppose, was my first really big headliner at the tender age of 27. And when I look back now and think of uh, his manager, what he must have thought of this young guy from Ireland flying all the way out to L.A. is where Lou Robin, his manager, lived. And I remember landing in L.A. the day of the huge big earthquake but uh, and, and was stuck in my hotel room for for a day before I got to meet Lou. And Lou very graciously over lunch gave me the tour with Johnny to come to Ireland. And uh, we became great friends. And, uh, and I did uh, three more tours with him after that. But when I look back now, I said, Jesus, at 27, I'm, <laughs> I must have looked. Uh, I'm sure he was looking there saying, does this guy know what he's doing? But anyway, we had a complete sellout tour a great tour yeah as we did other tours as well oh wow. incredible and i suppose i didn't realize at the time jerry although i was very aware of the great artist johnny cash was but i i suppose i didn't really realize the iconic star i had on my hands or the, the iconic star he was going to become and then <clears throat> that opened the doors for me in nashville once you had uh, promoted johnny cash successfully and lou uh, Rob and his manager uh, kindly said I could use him for a reference for any other acts that wanted to check me out. The floodgates opened. The, they all came through for me then year after year. You know, the, the greats like Christophers and Willie Nelson, as you said, you named them all there. George Jones and uh, Tammy Wynette. And um, we, we, we had a wonderful, I suppose, or I had a wonderful 17 year run I think of bringing uh, iconic country music artists into Ireland yeah Fantastic. Now, uh, Riverdance in the interval of the 1994 Eurovision Song Contest in Dublin, uh, where it had been won by Paul Harrington and Charlie McGettigan with Rock and Roll Kids for Ireland, uh, really put Ireland on the map. Now, the world craved more Irish dancing, and uh, you, you saw an opportunity, did research, and, uh, and the premiere of Rhythm of the Dance was in Sweden in 1999. Could you ever have imagined how long it would uh, endure the extent of the success of Irish uh, dance shows? No, I wouldn't. I certainly could not have imagined. I could not have laid odds on it in my wildest dreams. Uh, the longevity that Irish dance has globally uh, and still has today, there's still a ferocious appetite for not only Irish dance, but music and culture, culture globally around the world. I mean, Rhythm of the Dance has toured China uh, uh, maybe seven, eight times. We've We've done India, toured India, Taiwan, uh, Middle East, uh, South America, uh, Mexico. Um, and then, of course, uh, 
North America, many times in Europe. So if you were put, putting pins on a global map, we, we would have a lot of pins on it. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and I believe you actually that uh, Rhythm of the Dance in China reached over something like 750 million viewers uh, via streaming, which is phenomenal success. Yeah, it did. We were we were invited to appear on the Millennium Turnaround on New Year's Eve in Shenzhen City uh, by a television company, CCTV. And we had eight minutes, eight precious minutes on this huge New Year's Eve show that went out to 750 million, as you correctly pointed out. In, and the stage was a huge globe that opened up. I'd never seen anything like it. I went out for the event myself. And after that, the I think Rhythm of the Dance then became quite a, an established name in, in China. And we've been invited back there since every two years pre-COVID, yeah. Right. Now, tell me this. It's interesting. You, you, you never sort of set the show out to be uh, an, an Irish dance show. It kind of happened by accident. It happened by accident, sheer accident, uh, Jerry. in that the uh, I was invited by the head of music uh, then in RT, our national station here, to to put a troupe of dancers together to accompany the RT concert orchestra on a tour of America in 1998, and and I did, and uh, we went over and made a, quite a big tour of America with the concert orchestra, and the agent who who took the orchestra to America and the dancers. Later on, then uh, contacted me to see if I could put together uh, the same troupe of dancers, but with uh, you know uh, musicians, uh, maybe a number uh, six or seven musicians that wouldn't be as large as the concert orchestra to tour. And of course, I did that, and and rhythm of the dance was born. And we we went over and made another tour in America for for this agent, and then we we started in earnest in uh, spring of 1990. 12th of March, actually, in uh, in 1999 in Nyshopin in Sweden. That was our first date uh, in our own right uh, as Rhythm of the Dance. And we're still touring globally, thankfully, into our 23rd year now. In, in, incredible, absolutely uh, phenomenal success and uh, well done. Now, the, the show features uh, your highly skilled dancers, also uh, some of the finest traditional musicians who are uh, the best exponents of uh, playing the uniquely uh, Irish Ilan pipes, outstanding among pipes of the world for their uh, mellowness and softness of tone. And the Bowron, which has got a resurgence of popularity, also featured the Irish flute, the low whistle, the fiddle, and of course, Ireland's the national symbol, the harp. Uh, you also featured the show's uh, singers and uh, who are big hit everywhere you uh, that, that you play uh, as a whole production it's a you showcase a wealth of uh, diverse talent yeah we do that and i make a point of that in that i'm always blessed to have wonderful traditional musicians and as you as you called out there with a range range of instruments which the people love the audience love they're not just there to see dancing for two hours they're there to see irish music played very very well by great musicians and and our singers sing you know the the favorite uh, Irish songs that people want to hear, the standards, I guess. And then, of course, that weaved in with the dance and then brings together a very good two hours of top entertainment. And you're like on a trip to Ireland for two hours in the theatre, I suppose, yeah. Indeed. Now, native Irish people and those of Irish descent always turn out and forced to see the show, but also uh, plenty in the audience who have no Irish connection whatsoever. Uh, you must find it satisfying, uh, you know, to... Uh, to play your part in creating bonds between different cultures through the power and uh, the relevance of the Irish dance and the music and song? Well, I suppose, yes. It was fascinating in China where you stand in stage side and you say to the promoter, are, are we going down okay here? Because the, the crowd seem very timid and very quiet. And he said, oh, they're loving it. They're really excited. But, but they're clapping ever so timidly and quietly you know not like over here we'll say and 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 i suppose the one thing about irish dance is there's no language barrier and and they're there to hear the taps that wonderful famous you know line that made famous by river dance that uh you know that that line of dancers across the stage the full width of the stage in full flow pulsating rhythm hitting the stage i mean i think there's very few art forms of dance in the world as exciting as Irish dance in full flight.
Yes, indeed. You know, uh, uh, you, you've really you've got a, a very informative uh, website. It's called rhythmofthedance.com. And it features trailers from the show uh, and expanding on the content in more detail uh, than we can here. Now, the history of dance is explored, opening with the scene at Newgrange at dawn. And I would encourage anybody to please take a look at the website. It's, it's great. Now, it reveals that Irish dance can be traced back to the Druids around 400 AD. Uh, now, Queen Elizabeth II uh, has just marked her uh, 70th at Jubilee, but uh, way back in the 16th century, uh, Queen Elizabeth I brought Irish dancers to her court, I believe. They were described as being beautiful, magnificently dressed, and first-class dancers. Uh, so uh, Irish heritage is uh, truly breathtaking. Isn't it? Fantastic. And, of course, the costumes are just so beautiful. Everybody loves the costumes and, of course, the dance form. But I think Irish dance costumes are still beautiful. And we still keep some tradition in the show. I still like uh, to put out the costumes that have the Celtic squiggles and motifs on them. People just love those, even though, you know, we've moved on with some other uh, new costumes that are styled in a more modern way. But I still have an amount of those costumes in the show of the traditional because the audience love them. They love the colours, they love the uh, embroidery, the way, they're, the way they're made, the amount of work that goes into making them. So, yeah, I, it's, it's, part, it's part of the production, I guess, is the costumes. Everybody likes the colour. Indeed. Now, the show universally ends with uh, rapturous applause and uh, standing ovations from uh, people who go and see the show. Now, uh, some of those theatre critics are a little bit more reserved with their praise. However, in the case of your show, they easily recognise that it is authentic, not uh, a, a tribute type show out there, but uh, one of real quality. Uh, you, you must enjoy all the great media reviews. Yeah, we have picked up some really good reviews, <clears throat> uh, mainly across Europe, and some some really good reviews in America also. And and I suppose <clears throat> I've always been adamant, Jerry, that that my my dancers hit the floor with their hard shoe, my my musicians play live, my singers sing live, because <clears throat> there's no point in bringing a group of 26 people around the world who are multi-talented and not letting them showcase their their talent. And and that's why I suppose we're unique in that way, that uh, it, there's no tricks or tracks. It's it's a live show, and what what you hear is, is what's going on on the stage, yeah. Indeed. Now, I'm hearing all the time from listeners and those uh, I meet out and about with the uh, Irish Radio Roadshow and venues. People are delighted to be able to go out to live shows again. Uh, there's no substitute, indeed. Uh, there will be an opportunity to see your show, Rhythm of the Dance, at a theatre near you. There's just shy of 30 UK dates from the Alban Arena to Winchester and just about every place else in between. Now, it opens up on the 26th of June at the Forum Barrow in Furness with the final performance at the Gwyn Hall Neath in Wales on the 31st of July. Now, along the way, you can catch the show in places such as Kings Lynn, Swindon, Dartford, Cheltenham, Stevenage, Aldershot, Newbury, and many, many more venues. If you head to our website, irishradio.org, and click on the Rhythm of the Dance banner for all the UK dates. Now, Kieran, after lockdown, your cast and crew must be uh, more enthusiastic than ever to be out entertaining again. They cannot wait to get out. I mean, we, we have been out already. We did a... <clears throat> We did a tour of uh, Scandinavia in, in September last in October, and we were we were also in America earlier this year. We did uh, February, uh, March in America. So they, they have been out, thankfully, and those tours, even though we were just still coming out of COVID, not fully, but we were coming through it, were extremely good. And just the cast were so thrilled to, to get out. But they love going over doing the English tours. They love just touring over there. And as you said, we're going into rehearsals in two weeks' time and they're raring to go. Great. Now, I spoke to countless entertainers on the show during uh, lockdown. Now, getting the garden perfect uh, lost its appeal after uh, uh, the first few weeks. Uh, many artists found that they could readily master technology and produce albums at home or do Facebook live shows, often for charity to support those uh, suffering in the pandemic. Now, uh, indeed, uh, you work with uh, Daniel O'Donnell, who was our guest uh, at the time and uh, arranged uh, by you. He was uh, active singing outside some care homes and uh, so on. 
But listen, the last time we spoke on the programme, I said that you uh, definitely had a book in you, uh, an autobiography, uh, to recount helping uh, Jerry Lee Lewis to square his finances with the uh, IRS, the tax man in the USA, uh, working with the managing musical icons, as you mentioned, bringing Johnny Cash to Ireland. Uh, did, did, did you ever turn your hand to starting that book? Because I know uh, Rhythm of the Dance is always evolving and getting even bigger and bigger. Uh, was your focus on Rhythm of the Dance, or did you ever get a couple of lines done on that autobiography? Well, uh, well, I I did, Jerry. Actually, my, I had a call from a publisher probably during uh, lockdown, uh, and uh, he, he actually published Daniel O'Donnell's autobiography. And he called me one, one day. We were chatting, and I was telling him a few road stories, as I called them. And, and like you, he said, "Kieran, there's a book in you," and because he was laughing at some of the stories. And I said, "Well, I might knuckle down one of these days." So during lockdown, I, I managed to to write five five chapters uh, you know jerry lee lewis is at least one chapter if not two i had a good chapter on chuck berry and i had a, of course a chapter on johnny cash i had a chapter on my upbringing in east and county sligo and how i got into the music business from school at 16 years of age and uh, and did my leaving sort of right but took off i think the day after my <laughs> after my leaving cert with a bass guitar under my arm and uh, I had my vocation at that point, and uh, and that was uh, that was the end of the books. But uh, thankfully, I've I've had a, a career out of it all my life. But I I do I do hope to write the book. Yeah, um, maybe I, they they want about five, four or five more chapters, and they're in me. If I can just knuckle down and have the patience, I'm writing it myself. I don't have a ghostwriter. I want to write it myself in my own words, in my own time, and hopefully I'll get it done, Jerry. It's on It's on the bucket list, yeah. Right, well done, well done. At least you've, you've done some uh, some of it already. Now, the, the show is fantastic. Not alone does it feature all we've previously mentioned, but uh, it's enhanced by state-of-the-art technology, uh, some lighting and special uh, effects. It's uh, colourful, uh, as you mentioned, not least of all with the, the costumes. Uh, I read on your website, actually, Rhythm of the Dance, that traditional costumes are adorned with designs from the, the Book of Kells and other examples of Ireland's rich cultural heritage. Uh, Kieran, your dancers have a number of quick costume changes which uh, help with expressing the story within the dance and uh, greatly appeal to people looking at the show. Uh, now, we brought along an invited audience to see the show. Some uh, were themselves actually championship uh, dancers. Uh, they liked what the dancers were uh, sort of natural in terms of costume, hair and makeup and had uh, technical ability second to none. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I mean, technically, they are excellent. Of course, they're well trained. We we would rehearse the choreography, I mean, tirelessly before hitting the road and going on the road. And uh, they are they're well syncopated, well choreographed. And, and we're, we're fortunate to have, um, uh, I suppose, dancers that stay with the show, Jerry. There's at least a core of uh, 12 uh, dancers with me now for for over five years, which in the in the dance world is quite unique. And my choreographer, lead dancer, is now with the show 15 years. That's Dane McKeown and our lead male dancer, and, and Amy would our lead female would would be with the show. I think 10 years. So it's unusual to to hold people that long. And I'm fortunate that then you have great continuity. Yes, indeed, indeed, which is uh, very important, I can imagine, for a, for a show like that. Now, it's uh, it's the, the Jubilee weekend here, an extra bank holiday and all the rest of us in uh, the UK. And uh, if uh, anybody fancies booking, just go to the website, rhythmofthedance.com, our website, uh, irishradio.org, click on uh, the link there. Now, uh, you're heading for a, an anniversary shortly, uh, 25 years very soon, within the next couple of years. Yeah, would you believe in March 24 we'll we'll be having our 25th anniversary, and we're we're already invited to make a, a tour of Germany in uh, in January, February 24 uh, to mark the 25th, because we played Germany, of course, on that first tour in the spring of uh, of 98. Also, yeah, so we're really looking forward to that. I'm going to crank up the machine again for that. Maybe a new production, a whole new set of costumes, and. Uh, give the audience that have been loyal to us for so many years uh, 
something special, yeah. It's no. something to to shout about, I suppose, yeah. Great. Kieran, listen, long, long may uh, long may your success continue. Uh, we're giving away two tickets uh, on the show on our quiz today uh, at a venue off the winner's choice to see Rhythm of the Dance. Now, uh, for those listening, do try your luck. No need to get uh, the blues if you're not the winner, though. Uh, but do book early for uh, the tour to avoid disappointment as uh, the shows do sell out. See rhythmofthedance.com or click on the banner on our website, irishradio.org. In just a moment, we'll have some music from uh, the show. Kieran listen it's been great to speak to you once again and I hope to catch rhythm of the dance this time round. That would be nice Jerry and thanks again to Irish Radio and yourself for all your support over the years.